Hi, my name is Mike Hoffman, and in this short video, we're going to learn how to trigger, decode, and do physical layer compliance testing on the MIL standard 1553 bus using the InfiniVision X series oscilloscope line. Next to me is our new 6000 X series oscilloscope. Let's begin. Now, your first concern is going to be probing. The MIL standard 1553 bus is a differential bus encoded via Manchester. Keysight recommends the N2818A 200 MHz differential probe. It comes with our unique auto probe interface that self powers and self identifies the probe on the scope. Now that we're properly probing the signal, we need to set up our oscilloscope to properly decode and trigger on the bus. I'm going to start first by setting my scaling factors. First, I'm going to turn up channel 1. Next, we're going to set our time base. And then next, I'm going to go into the serial menu, change our mode to MIL standard 1553, and simply press Auto Setup. What this does for you is sets the upper and lower thresholds for trigger and decode purposes. Now that we have our signal up and running and decoding properly on the screen, we can dial into the trigger settings. Now the Auto Setup already set up our triggering thresholds and gave us a default trigger condition. I'm going to press the yellow T up at the top of the screen as a shortcut and see there's a variety of different triggering options for this bus. In this particular case, we're triggering on all commander status word start conditions. What I've done now is gone ahead and zoomed out so we have a number of different words on screen. I'm going to go ahead and take a single shot and now we're going to be able to use what we call the lister feature to look at what we're decoding in more detail. Now the lister feature sits right up here in the top right hand corner of the graticule simply tap the drop down box and I can do a half screen lister as you see here or I can press the double down chevron once more and get a full screen lister. What this allows me to do is go through and see exactly what I'm decoding. Now in this signal I'm seeing a parity, a Manchester and a sync error. We can go ahead and dial in on those using a trigger condition. I'm going to go ahead and select parity error, close my lister and run the scope again. So we've locked right in on a parity error. Now you may have noticed that everything we've looked at so far has been very protocol layer troubleshooting, but that doesn't really give us too much information as far as are we meeting spec or not. So here loaded on my trusty flash drive is a number of downloadable mask files that we have created based on the MIL standard 1553B specification. So what we'll do now is load up a few of those different mask files, look at the kind of tests that we can run, and talk a little bit about why that's important to you. Now loading one of these mask files is very simple. All we need to do is go into our start menu, tap file, and recall. From there, we're going to select the file to recall type as mask. We're going to select press to go. And then you can see here in the root of my USB drive, I have all six of the downloadable masks. Now these are labeled for the 3000X series, but trust me when I say that these mask files are the same across the entire product line, 6000X included. The first one here I'm going to go ahead and select is the uh, BC Direct Coupled Input Mask. I go ahead and select that and press to recall. And what the scope is doing is counting how many errors or how many violations it sees based on the physical parameters required by MIL standard 1553. Now, as you can see here, uh, we have a almost one over 1% 1 failure rate. This is not a system you'd want to be deploying on an aircraft anytime soon, which is why you need one of these. Now there's a variety of different mask files linked down below. You will find a link to where all these mask files live, as well as an application note describing the use model for each one of these masks. But really what it's giving you is a 30,000 foot view of the system. Do you have any physical layer problems that could be the root cause behind any protocol layer problems? You don't know unless you have a tool that gives you the detail that an oscilloscope does. If you have any questions, please reach out to your local Keysight representative, and I thank you for your time and watching this video today. Have a good one. Thank you.